Hey, welcome back to the channel. If it is your first time here, make sure to check out the other videos that I upload on the, the weekly self-development playlist. And of course, hopefully you see something, you leave a like, you comment, you subscribe, and stay tuned for more happening on the Spoken Awoken channel. Awoken, I'm sipping on potions, evoking emotions that cause you to move. I don't even need to see a movement. Once you hear my voice on a beat, you're probably moving. So today we're going to be talking about overthinking and how overthinking really affects us. And I'll be sharing three tips with you on how I stopped overthinking all the time. Three very fundamental tips that I apply. I mean, like I said, all the time, I'm still a heavy overthinker at periods um i'm a person who likes to analyze a lot of situations however i found that just sitting down there and just mindlessly going numb about what's happening around me and just taking me out of the space where i should be at times is really not helpful but these three tips that i applied actually have really been with me through the process and still help me today so i'll just give you a quick breeze through of the three and then we'll get into more detail as we go along with the video the first tip i'll be sharing deals with actively confronting your thoughts the second deals with understanding the things you can control versus the things you cannot control and then the third final point deals with discovering your call to action so let's begin with the first like i said in the beginning overthinking is something that sometimes catches you off guard and has you in a useless state or space whereby you completely zone out it oftentimes i'm taken out of activities and worrying about something that is either gone or irrelevant something that may never happen and I'm just lost in that space. Confronting your thoughts, however, is, I believe, the first step that one should take to overcoming overthinking all the time. By having an active pursuit of, of eliminating or addressing these thoughts in your mind, it, it, it allows you to no longer just spiral down the rabbit hole of chaos. I've done this by implementing journaling and meditation into my daily practices actually um i mention meditation a lot on this channel and then you guys are probably wondering what kind of meditation does brandon do like you know here's what i'll make a video on meditation if this video gets 25 likes let's just go down there and like it up that will definitely confirm me making a video on meditation through journaling i actively you know, write down what's been bothering me, write down what I think is a big concern as to why I'm constantly always spiraling into this state of doom or helplessness or no absence of all faith and hope. <laughs> and by writing down these thoughts, you can now see how relevant something is or how much attention you're giving to something that isn't necessarily important. Once you are able to confront these thoughts and, you know, weigh them, understand how important they are to deal with, or probably just ignore them because you can't do anything about it, I think that is one of the first fundamental ways to overcome overthinking, and it really helped me a lot. Moving on to the second tip or piece of advice is understanding what you can control versus what you don't control. Just to prove to you how good journaling, you know, works, I'll just read an excerpt from my um, journal that I wrote. Actually, this was in April. So, suppose you identify the thoughts plague in your mind and you figure out that you are anxious about other people's thoughts, feelings, actions, and treatments toward you. The past and death are also useless to think about. You have no influence over how people choose to perceive you, and frankly, you shouldn't care. The past cannot change, but you can learn from it. Death is inevitable, so worrying about it is futile. Meditating on death can bring about an appreciation of life. Be thankful for a new day, as you could have died before the sun graced the sky. Everything you cannot control from the end of others, you can for yourself. You can control your detachments, as well as your expectation. I think I did a pretty good job in April. <laughs> um, so let me just explain a few things. So like I said, you can't control how people feel about you, how people 
will react to you. You can control that within yourself. Understanding that is one of the best pieces of advice that I ever received and in essence has made me a much happier person. Of course, no one has to like you. No one has to do anything. No one has to even coincide with the will that you have. It doesn't matter to them. Humans probably most of the time won't care about you. We always care about ourselves. So take control of yourself, especially your detachments. I'm not coming here to give you this wisdom that detach yourself from everything, but there are some things that we are attached a little bit to. Sometimes our fame, sometimes our lives that we portray on social media. The moment it's ruined, we're ruined, and then we think about why was I, you know, so caught up in this. You can control your detachment. Especially as I commented on death, um, yeah dog, death is very natural. We don't even know what happens beyond death. We have theories of it. There's nobody who has come back strictly and told us, hey, this is what goes on. It's pretty lit over here. <laughs> Which brings me back to a video I made some weeks back about your expectations. Controlling your expectations out of an event. We always think that when we engage in something, we're going to succeed. Most likely, failure is our outcome but we expect success so much that we now get disappointed and we start to overthink that okay this has to be this way this has to be done this way and when you overthink that success a little bit too much you never learn how to learn from failure which can be a great teacher but of course we're stuck overthinking what could have been instead of what happened and of course Finding a call to action. So let me just read that excerpt from my journal once more. By meditating death and further appreciating life, we begin to understand the need to utilize our days completely. Overcoming, overthinking also requires full occupancy. I find days where I have been of service to others to be quite fulfilling. Said fulfillment, coupled with exercise and hard work, left me clear of thoughts and in need of sleep. Oftentimes, we overthink in quiet times, such as before rest or interrupted sleep in the night. Aside from being active, we must now take this time to confront what we can and must control. Now, the ending of this where um, I mentioned that we must now take this time to confront what we can and must control, that just feeds back into everything the first and second point because obviously when we understand what we can change I have a very simple flow chart of how things should work um, can you change it yes then don't worry about it can you change it no then don't worry about it. you need to recognize what is within your power and what is out of your power and what you can truly take control of obviously you could only realize these things once you confront your thoughts so it is useful to spend some time meditating spend some time reflecting on what is it that constantly bothers you it just can't be a case where oh, i'm upset about nothing although that is sometimes overthinking and that is idleness that is not overthinking <laughs> you're idle and this is exactly why the third point calls for action be active i find myself once i'm tired i have no time to overthink i need to sleep you know get yourself occupied call to action most of the times when some people have used certain things in their lives as distractions but even then sometimes overthinking can overpower your distractions however i think once you start to essentially identify understand if you can control that and chop it down or work on it then you have a better chance at defeating overthinking when it randomly arrives on you i overthink a lot in fact i've had all this gear for a while i thought about my youtube channel for approximately three years of my life having the means to have started three years ago probably been bigger and i always used to wonder what kind of content am i going to produce how's this gonna go but as soon as i let go of these thoughts because i know i wanted to start this as soon as i said you know what let me actively do something about it everything kind of rolls in place there's a lot of me for me to learn and hopefully you guys learn from me learning and you learn from me journaling <laughs> but it, it really does require you to just sometimes drown out your thoughts, say shut up to the inner you, and just move. 
So don't be a useless overthinker. Actively do something about those thoughts that plague your mind. And that's it. If you enjoyed today's video, remember to leave the likes. If we get the required 25 likes, I'll do a, a video on how I meditate, my whole meditative process, if you guys want to see that. Like I said before, I'm looking to add more videos in terms of how much I upload during the week. And just stay tuned for that. It's going to be a bit more different from just a sit down and discussion. Might be a story time. Might be a skit. I don't know. But all you know is that every Tuesday, this video is going to be coming on. So take care. Leave a like, share, comment, and of course, if you haven't already, subscribe.